What the hell? Y'all don't like my song? I mean, what's really going on? So now, like, I'm not even supposed to do soulful strut? Y'all better shut y'all asses up. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right. Um, I'm doing this for all my young men over at St. Amelia's Lakeside um, that needed to know who Fred Hampton really is. And uh, it was a lot to convey to them. I tried to show them a little bit from. I believe, Eye on the Prize series. However, you can never get enough information and never um, get overkill when you're dealing with information on the brother Fred Hampton Jr. So, I mean Fred Hampton Sr. So, with that being said, who I think, by the way, had one of the most significant voices um, I often wondered if Fred sing because he has such a significant voice for a young man, uh, and it resonated, you know, with a uh, vibrato that was just uh, seemed that it would be transferred over to a singing voice. But however, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about early in the morning of December fourth, nineteen sixty nine. Chicago police raided the home of a man named Fred Hampton and fatally shot him while he slept beside his girlfriend, Deborah, who was then nine months pregnant with their son, who is now Fred Hampton Jr. Shout out to you, brother, over there, shot. Only 21 at the time, Hampton had already been named the chairman of the Illinois Black Panther Party and deputy chairman of the National Party. So he was a really um, charismatic, really informative, uh, just a, a motivational mover, a community organizer. At such a young age, he was on the ball. Like, most 20-year-olds should be when they're not all filled with um, ignorant type of rhetoric and rhetoric that's not going to change the game. Okay? He was an extraordinary public speaker with a present understanding of the forces that oppressed black Americans. And he was committed to cooperating with other groups to bring about systemic uh, social change. To the FBI under President Nixon, he was deemed a radical threat. Even before he became president, Nixon had launched a campaign to vilify black Americans and justify raiding their homes unprovoked, incarcerating them in mass numbers, and even killing them under the pretense of protecting the public. That's why I said all this rhetoric that they talk now is the same rhetoric they talked 30 years ago. Trust me, y'all. I wouldn't lie to you, babies. I wouldn't lie to you. So they beating around the bush. It's the same program. Wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. So something different has got to happen, and I hope that it's happening right now on the planet. And everything and every dice I roll is banked on it. This is the time that the universe says no more. The whole problem is the blacks, Nixon once told his chief of staff, H.R. Hadelman. The key is to devise a system that recognizes um, that without appearing to. You see that? Without appearing to. See, they're the masters of technology on this elite group here um, that are making... Uh, life miserable for me and you. Hampton's death 
became the first truly high-profile case of police brutality in American history. Not only because it was the first to occur, it not only because it was the first to occur, but because new lightweight handheld cameras enable filmmakers to expose all the lies behind the Chicago Police Department's official narrative. Just like today, y'all. Ain't no different. Ain't nothing changed. Listen, little brothers. Let me finish giving it to you. Because you wanted me to do it, and I'm going to give it to you. Because all of y'all are friend happy. Wake up. Wake up, little Freds. Wake up. At a news conference after Hampton's death, State Attorney Edward V. Hanrahan, Hanrahan said the immediate violent criminal reaction of the occupants in shooting at, un at announced police officers emphasizes the extreme viciousness of the Black Panther Party. So does their refusal to cease firing at the police officers when they were even urged to do so several times. See how they lie? See how they lie? They're just a bunch of liars and thieves and bandits. Just like they shoot people, plant evidence in their hand. I mean, the whole system got to come down. And I hope I live to see the day that all this stuff is busted wide open. And it can start over again. Or the day that it all comes to an end. I want to be here. ATV reporter at the scene reiterated the same version of events. After describing Hampton's home as nothing but an arsenal of weapons, the reporter quoted a sergeant in the race saying, It was 15 minutes of hell and a miracle. A miracle because not one policeman was killed. A miracle because not uh, more policemen were shot. The police were armed with a 45 caliber submachine gun or and two shotguns. That's all. But when the filmmakers Howard Elk and Mike Gray gained access to Hampton's apartment on the 20. 300 block of West Monroe Street, they found no evidence of shotguns, of gunshots from the room where Fred Hampton was sleeping. Obviously, there was no smartphones back then in 1969, you guys. And police brutality went unchecked virtually without an exception. Alkin Gray's 1971 film, The Murder of Fred Hampton, changed all that. The 90-minute film begins with footage of Fred Hampton when he was alive, speaking to crowds, articulating Black Panther's mission and establishing the terms of the fight against injustice. Only the way Brother Fred, the Chairman Fred, could do. Only the way Chairman Fred could do. The film is worth watching for those speeches, just for those speeches alone. More than 50 years later, Hampton's words could not be more resonant. 50 years later. The second half of the film draws on the techniques of an investigative journalism to help uncover exactly what happened that December morning in 1969. I was 10 years old, by the way. Hampton's death was not only a murder, it was premeditated. This, this, this murder tore my family up. Tore my household up. Ugh. Ugh. Hampton's death was not only a murder. Again, it was premeditated. At a house dinner the night before, he was drugged by an FBI informant who had infiltrated the Illinois chapter of the Black Panthers to ensure that Hampton would not wake up during the raid. Y'all hear what I said? He was drugged the night before by an informant who was sitting there breaking bread with him. Whew. 
And that was just to ensure that he wouldn't wake up during this raid.